الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في شان حبيبه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلام عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear viewers أهلا وسهلا Welcome to the series رحمة للعالمين The Mercy onto the Universe episode special for Rabi Un Nur 1445 May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless each and every one of you Alhamdulillah today is the great day in which the entire Muslim Ummah celebrates it in form of the holy birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A shayar beautifully says, Nisar teri chahal pahal par hazaro eidhe rabiul awwal siwa iblis ke jahaan mein sabi to khushia bana rahe hai. Alhamdulillah, the great day has arrived. Alhamdulillah, from past few days you have been hearing in this series about the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, today we will hear much more about his personality, inshallah. We have a guest with us, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa sallam. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How's your health? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. All well. MashaAllah, you are always shining. Allah keep you shining, inshaAllah. InshaAllah, we will hear from His Eminence, inshaAllah, much more about the event, inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi wahdah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala min la nabiyya ba'dah. Amma ba'd. فقد قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه العظيم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم صدق الله مولانا العلي العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الحبيب الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين. This beautiful month of Rabi al Awwal, Rabi al Nur, has dawned upon us, and wherever we turn to, like you mentioned in the beautiful couplet of yours, that there is the praises of the Holy Prophet صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. It is being said, in whichever way, in whichever form. According to everyone's own capacity, their abilities, to the extent that our inboxes and our emails and our WhatsApp messages come up with beautiful messages, beautiful poetical uh, 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 couplets in praise of the Holy Prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam, and why not? Because our Imam, Imam Ahl Sunnat, Imam Ishq wa Muhabbat. Maulana Asha Ahmad Rida Fadil Barelvi radiallahu ta'ala anhu says Arsh pe taza chhed chhaad Farsh pe turfa dhoom dham Arsh pe taza chhed chhaad Farsh pe turfa dhoom dham Kaan jidhar lagaiye Teri hi daastan hai So indeed centuries have passed And the physical arrival of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is still as crisp and fresh as fresh can be. And we want to take the opportunity of expressing our gratitude and our appreciation, our happiness uh, of being an ordinary, lowly ummati of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And we are sharing in this happiness and it is appropriate that we should develop within ourselves a habit of continuously sending salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi sallam sallallahu ala habibi sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. And Imam Muhammad al-Jazuli, a Moroccan scholar of the Shadri Tariqah, says that he who does not receive any kind of inner contentment, peace, tranquility, happiness, joy, uh, upon hearing the beloved name of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, then in that bosom, in the chest of that person, 
cannot be the heart of a believer. So the great Imam on an occasion, he was traveling and there came the time where he needed to have made wudu. And according to his physical need, he got to a well and he looked around the well, there was nothing by which he could take water out of the well. And then a little girl from a house nearby the well came out and she recognized that this is a pious person, learned scholar. And she said to him, Imam, are you looking for something? And he said, my child, I need water for wudu. So she was also close to the well. So she went up to the well, put her face into the well and the water came up. Subhanallah. So when the water came up, Imam also looked at this child, but he was more happy that there's water there. So he performed his wudu. When he performed his wudu, he said, but there's a secret here and I need to get the secret. So performed his salah. He went to the house. He thanked the little girl. And he said to her, my child, please tell me, what is the secret? There was no bucket. There was no rope. How did you get the water up? She looked at him and said, Imam, I just recited one durood upon Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. So if the power of one single durood recited with absolute sincerity can bring that amount of change, then we should not be oblivious when we engage in the recitation of the Rood Sharif. So Alhamdulillah, it is Rabi'ul Awwal and we have reached the climax. So we will speak about the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Now when you speak of someone, uh, there are two types of recordings. <clears throat> one is a biography and the other one is an autobiography. So these are the recorded lives, uh, recorded life and works. It includes lifestyles, it includes other records, whatever is captured. And autobiography is that which the person writes himself. Like I went on a travel, so I got my mamayas of the travel or, you know, etc. Or what we say in Urdu, you know, Safar Nama, you know. So okay. this, this, was, this was quite normal and if, till today is, is quite normal as well. And biography is when someone else writes about a selected person. And both forms of writing need to be captured within a timeline. There's a start and there's an end. And it has to be in a chronological order. Essentially, it starts with birth and ends at death. After death, we can't write about that person. Before birth, we can't write about that person because there's nothing before that. So, whatever it is, perhaps we can maybe go a little bit before the birth. Maybe we can write about the parents or the genealogy or the family line from where this person emerged and then we speak about the person and then it depends about the type of family it is and the fame that the person gained because of the family etc. So like I say that this starts with birth, uh, born to a family of so and so, uh, so many number of siblings. Uh, youth, educational, you know, standards, journey, uh, achievements, marriage, offsprings, all the different accolades and, uh, uh, you know, degrees and etc, etc. And perhaps then we come to aspects like the reasons as to why this man or this person has become, you know, famous. And then we will at the end say, sadly, he passed away on so and so date. So irrespective of who the person is, whether he is from the super elite of the Ummah whom we call Sahaba Kiram Ridwanullahi Ta'ala Alim Ajma'in and they are all beloved to us. 
for they are the beloved of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa They are the companions of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, radiyallahu anhum wa radu an. So even if we talk about them, we talk about great awliya Allah, we talk of ulama, sulaha, uh, you know, Mufassirin, Mufakkirin, whoever they are, or mm -hmm. if you want to add on the other terminology, the doctors, engineers, mm -hmm. scholars, lawyers, whoever they are, you know, probably, uh, uh, you know, leader or a statesman, etc. It starts off with the birth and it goes on, but there is one personality, one person and personality whose timeline does not begin with birth. And whose timeline does not end with birth. And it is the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. For he himself has said, لَوْ لَا كَلَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْأَفْلَاقِ لَوْ لَا كَلَمَا خَلَقْتُ الدُّنْيَا لَوْ لَا كَلَمَا أَزْهَرْتُ الرُّبُوبِيَّةِ Even the uh, being Rabb would not have been identified if Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam did not come into this dunya. So there were two covenants that took place in the realm of souls or alam -e arwah all mankind were assembled and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked of them alastu bi rabbikum and they all said unanimously qalu they said bala undoubtedly yes indeed you are and then a second covenant took place and Quran bears testimony to this. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْصُرُنَّهِ قَالَ أَأَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَخَذْتُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكُمْ إِسْرِي قَالُوا أَقْرَرْنَا قَالَ فَاشْهَدُوا وَأَنَا مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ And here it says, and recall when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from all the prophets, one was a mass gathering of all souls. And this is a selected gathering where all the prophets were present and a covenant was taken from them that whatever I should give you of the scripture and wisdom, then comes to you a messenger conforming your books, confirming for you your books, then assuredly, you shall believe in him and help him. They said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, Do you agree and take this as my firm agreement as binding on you? And they said, meaning all the Anbiya Ali Musalatu Wasalam said, We agreed. Not we are in agreement, we agreed. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Then be witness, and I am a witness with you amongst your witnesses. So, previous Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam expressed their desire. And the desire was to be in the ummat of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The rank of a Nabi is something which is very great. And when that greatness proclaims that I would love to be in the ummah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, then we have verses of the Qur'an. For example, وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِي اسمه أحمد. And we would be able to elaborate on this, but... I think even before we go into the uh, uh, explanation or probably just the translation of this verse, uh, we will pick that up, inshallah, uh, just after the break. Welcome back, inshallah. Let us now hear the translation of the ayat and much more about it, inshallah. So the verse that we recited is from Surah As-Saf, uh, Surah 61, verse number 6. And when Isa ibn Maryam والسلام, said, O children of Bani Israel, surely I am the messenger of Allah sent to you confirming that which is 
before me in the Torah and giving you the good news of a messenger meaning Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam who will come after me and his name shall be Ahmad. Nabi, Israel, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam said in a supplication, in a dua Rabbana wabaath fihim rasula O oh, our Lord and send among them a messenger. This is Surah Al-Baqarah. There are countless bounties if you look at the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. They are innumerable. They are not mentionable. We cannot put a count or a figure to it. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا So which of the favors can we be completely thankful for? The power of seeing or the power of hearing, the movement of our fingers, our limbs, our internal organs are functioning and perhaps we don't know exactly how they function. Those that have specialized in it, they understand it and they know about it. And we take into consideration, you know, all the others. But the bounty that supersedes all other bounties, if you take your hearing, for example, you are unable to hear, you can't have a conversation. You're unable to see, you can't go to another place, etc., etc. It's, it's, we know it, it's innumerable. And the bounty that supersedes all the bounties is in the coming of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. That is the most unique favor of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala upon us. In, it is he who raised amongst the unlettered people a messenger. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as the name of this program is also denoting for us Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a, the, a mercy unto all the worlds وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Alameen is the plural of alam and commentators of the Holy Quran in the opening chapter of the Holy Quran have declared that there are more than 18 thousand different worlds and therefore the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is the mercy unto all that and when the arrival of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is declared in the Holy Quran لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ Rahim. Surely there has come to you a messenger from amongst yourself. Heavy upon him is your suffering and he ardently desires your welfare. To the believers he is most kind and most merciful. Bounty is in the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَٰلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Please declare, O Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, only Allah's bounty and only His mercy is on it. Therefore, let them rejoice. That is better than all that which they accumulate. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu says in commentary of this, that by fadl here is meant by qul bi fadlillah. Fadl actually means the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And this uh, has been recorded in tafsir ruhul ma'ani and ad-durrul manthur. So Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would fast on a Monday. And uh, Muslim Sharif hadith narrated by Abu Qatada Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa was asked as to the reasons of fasting on a Monday and then he simply re replied Fihi wulittu wa fihi unzila alayhi I was born on this day and this day I received the first revelation. So that is why in an expression of thanksgiving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, expresses his happiness by way of observing fast. 
Abu Lahab, the uncle of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he freed Uthobiyah, the slave girl, by indicating to her by his index finger when she brought the glad tidings of the birth of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is stated in a hadith that he gets some kind of sustenance to quench his thirst from the index finger even in the hereafter in his cover. Hazrat Sha'ya alayhi salam, he has been informed to announce to the people of Bani Israel. Uh, and the hadith is Qala Wahn ibn Munabbah awha Allahu ila nabiyyin min anbiya Bani Israel yuqalu lahu Sha'ya. He was a prophet from the prophets of the uh, of the Anbiya of Bani Israel. Anna qum fi Bani Israel fa inni sa'utliqu lisanaka bi wahyin ila akhir al-hadith. Tafsir Ibn Kathir makes a, a, a reference of this under verse number four, uh, 54 of Surah Nur. <coughs> so, Azrul Shaya salam stood up in a gathering and he was asked to make this announcement and by the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions that O skies, <coughs> referring to the skies, O skies, listen to me and O earth, remain silent. So he's addressing the skies and saying, you listen to me and to the earth he's saying, you be silent. Allah Ta'ala is going to make known a great sign of His and Allah will cause the wilderness and the jungles to be inhabited. Deserted places will become inhabited again. Deserts will become lands of greenery. The poor will become rich and wealthy. Shepherds will become monarchs. And from amongst the unlettered, وَيُرِيدُ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ أُمِّيًّا مِّنَ الْأُمِّيِّينَ I will send an unlettered prophet. لَيْسَ بِفَضٍ وَلَا غَلِيظٍ وَلَا سُخَّابٍ Who will never speak nor utter that which is hurtful. He will never cause any noise in the marketplace. And he will be a bearer of the best qualities. If he would place his blessed feet on dried out bamboo, there will be no noise emitting from, the, from his movement on dried sticks. He will be sent as Bashir and Nadir, that is witness and bearer of glad tidings. His tongue will be pure. Blind, eye, blind eyes will gain vision because of him. Deaf ears will once again be able to hear. Sealed hearts will become receptive because of his blessings. All good will be made known to him. His garment will be peace. Piety will be his conscience. His words will be full of wisdom. Truth and loyalty will be his nature. To overlook and forgive will be his disposition. Haq will be his shariat, the prescribed law. Justice will be his sirat, meaning way of life. Islam will be his creed. His name will be Ahmad. His ummah will be the best of nations. And they will be believers in one Allah. They will believe in all the prophets. This narration continues, but let me summarize with a few couplets. Maulana Zafar Ali Khan says, Kya shaan e ahmadi ka chaman mein zuhoor hai, har gul mein har shajar mein Muhammad ka noor hai. We continue with this shortly after the break, inshallah.
Welcome back. Let us inshallah hear much more about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so we were talking about uh, Nabi Sha'ya, you know, describing the arrival of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa Beautiful qualities and the attributes that was mentioned before the arrival of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa And I want you to join this with one of my earlier statements in which it is clearly said that it is the only personality whose uh, uh, timeline does not start with birth and end with because it is pre-birth and like we mentioned that he is from time immemorial decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he is the first in creation and that is why we read that couplet kya shan ahmadi ka chaman mein zuhoor hai har gul mein har shajar mein muhammad ka noor hai darya mein hai sadaf mein hai lalo gohar mein hai jisko nazar na aaye wo nazar ka qusoor hai so i recited the verses of the holy quran four verses and they were from surah yasin and perhaps we may sit and think and ponder Surah Yaseen and its relation with the arrival of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. We read Surah Yaseen because we want benefit in our business. So open the shop, first read Surah Yaseen. Going on a journey, read Surah Yaseen. Read Surah Yaseen for barakah in the house. Make it easy for somebody who's in Sakra to read Surah Yasin. Mm -hmm. Tremendous amount of benefits of Surah Yasin. But look at the opening word of Surah Yasin. It's huruf e Ya and Sin. So when it comes to these type of words, these are code words. And code words, uh, for example, when Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came and he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Kaf. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I understood. Said, ha, said, I understood. Ya, I understand. Ha, ayn saad, kaf ha, ya, ayn saad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa on every letter declared, I understood. So in other words, that is between Allah and Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So in reciting Surah Yasin at the beginning of it, uh, it is explicitly mentioned that Yasin is from amongst the names of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And Yasin, uh, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, by the people of the era was also referred to as Al Yasin. So, Allama Sheikh Ismail Haqqi, author of Tafsir Ruhul Bayan, uh, states prior to this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the various qualities of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in the, in the uh, uh, Holy Quran. And there are many aspects which we are able to relate with. And each time we look at that, then there is a deep, profound meaning in that for us to be able to lead our lives in accordance with that which is found in Quran, expounded by the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, modeled an example to us by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, to be able to take it to the next level where we would be able to benefit our lives, live our lives in accordance. There is no prohibition. If you need to go out and earn your rosy through business, Alhamdulillah, Allah give you barakah in there. If you need to do it by some other profession, Alhamdulillah. Also there is Allah give barakah in that. But if it is run with absolute consciousness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of all my actions, then we are able to understand even from that, that whatever we do will be beneficial to us. Because Allah knows full well what is in our hearts, what is in our minds, and how we are conducting ourselves. And Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam made it so easy upon us that he described and, this, and explained everything to us in a way, in a manner by which we are able to conduct ourselves. 
So let's go a little further in our discussion. Welcome back. Before I come to the conclusion, I'd like to conclude with the verses of Surah Yasin which I have recited. But uh, let us go back into history and let us take one particular example from within the time of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam. A few people got together to host and celebrate an event. And those who gathered were the illustrious companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Wasallam. And the place for this event is the designated place in Masjid al-Nabawi, the Masjid of our Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam. And these were the people that drank deep from the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Wasallam. And they were able, they were able to share this between themselves. They were gathered to express their happiness like is happening all over the world today. So they wanted to express their happiness and their gratitude for being the recipients of the nur in the form of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a hadith recorded in Sunan Nisa'i uh, on Abi Sa'id al-Khudri قال, قال Ma'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam خرج على حلقة يعني من أصحابه فقال ما أجلسكم قالوا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم asked them why have you gathered and they said جلسنا ندعو الله ونحمده ما هدانا لدينه ومن علينا بك so رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم was informed by this little gathering in Masjid al-Nabawi when he emerged from his room and he came to the to this people, the Sahaba Ikram Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alim Ajma'in gathered and he said to them, Why have you gathered here? And they said, The primary reason of our gathering is that we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having blessed us and for having favored us with you as your presence, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And remember Sayyidina Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu also states, Manna alayna rabbuna an ba'atha fina muhammada. And perhaps a translation of this in the, in the Urdu version could be, فَضْلِ رَبُّ الْعُلَىٰ اور کیا چاہیے مِلْ گئے مُصطفیٰ اور کیا چاہیے He asked them, oh my companions, are you prepared to take an oath on this matter? And they said, yes, why not? But we can understand it was not the situation or the place that warranted the taking of an oath. But they obliged each companion of that gathering, each sahabi rasul رضی اللہ تعالی عنہم اجمعین in that محفل took the oath that we were seated in this gathering to offer thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having sent you as a mercy unto us. The Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, I asked you to take an oath, not that I did not believe you, but whilst you were gathered here in the masjid and I was in my hujra mubarak, Atani Jibreel, Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam came to me, فَأَخْبَرَنِي And he informed me أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَاهِي بِكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proud about this gathering of Sahaba Ikram expressing the same to the malaika in the heavens. So as though uh, the malaika also would look at you know, uh, 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 as a favor from Allah subhanahu, uh, as a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say the praises of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So, coming back to the verses of the Qur'an that I have recited and we said Yaseen, meaning that Yaseen, as we mentioned that when and how it is recited, then I want to now move towards concluding 
and it will be a single point from the three verses. And the next time when we read these beautiful verses, it will have a different spiritual impact and feeling upon us, inshallah. So Yasin, as I mentioned, is the surah of Yasin named in the Holy Quran. And Surah Yasin, Yasin is actually the name of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And we also know this that we mentioned Kuntu Nabiyyan wa Adamu Bayna al Ruhi wal Jasad, Kuntu Nabiyyan wa Adamu Bayna al Ma'i wa Teen. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam said, I was a Nabi then when Adam Alayhi Musalatu was Salam was between clay and water. And I was a Nabi then when Adam alayhi salatu was salam was between soul and body. I was already a Nabi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states here, إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Undoubtedly you are from the messengers. Meaning, O oh Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, you are from amongst the messengers. Meaning, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was present when this verse was already mentioned in Nakala min al mursaleen When the angels heard this recitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because it is stated in Tafsir Ruhul Bayan that prior to the creation of Nabi Adam alayhi salatu was salam, 2000 years before the creation of Nabi Adam alayhi salatu was salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recited Surah Yaseen. 2000 years before the creation of Nabi Adam alayhi salatu was salam, Allah recited Surah Yaseen. And Malaika asked that who is this personality upon whom you are referring that you are from? The, from the Mursaleen, the messengers, they said simultaneously Mubarak when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them that it will be Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam whose name shall be Ahmad in the skies and Muhammad on earth. They simultaneously said Mubarak, glad tidings to that ummah upon whom this surah will be revealed and they will be blessed. So 2000 years before the creation of Nabi Adam alayhi salatu was salam, this surah was recited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When actually did the, crea the, 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 the uh, actual creation of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa come into existence? Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam asked Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, oh, Jibreel, what is your age? And Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam said, I cannot mention my age. But 70,000 years, once in a period of 70,000 years, I would be able to see a star that would shine to its maximum once in 70,000 years. And I saw that happen 70,000 times. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Ana al -kawkab. So Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam says, قَلَّبْتُ الْأَرْضَ مَشَارِقَهَا وَمَغَارِبَهَا فَمَا رَأَيْتَ مِثْلَ مُحَمَّدًا I have scanned the earth from east to west and I have not seen anything that is matching to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam declares Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as absolutely matchless, the most superior in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intensify for us our love for Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Our love for Sahaba kiram ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi wa ajma'in, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the ulama haq, the sulaha, and the awliya of the ummah. May Allah increase our love for them as well. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us obedient followers of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and those who highlighted for us the true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum 
ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وكريمنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم أتم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في ديننا ودنيانا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمشايخنا ولأساتذنا ولمن له حق علينا ولسائر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين زاك الله خيرا for such a beautiful uh, discourse alhamdulillah we learned a lot of new things about it alhamdulillah what a knowledgeable bayan explanation by his eminence the deputy principal of darul pretoria hafiz ismail hazarvi mutta'anallahu bi tuli hayati may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him long life with good health inshallah dear viewers alhamdulillah this brings us to the end of our this series rahmatul lil alamin mercy onto the universe rabiul awwal 1445 series i ask in the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us accept our humble efforts and i ask each and every one of you to look after yourself inshallah hopefully we will see you soon on the very same screen on the very same channel please look after yourself remember us in your pious dua assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh